I'm Tiffany and I'm the host of the sewing blog Tip Stitch. Hopefully you already follow me on my blog, but just in case you don't, check me out at tipstitch.wordpress.com and follow me along on my sewing journey. This is my very first YouTube video and I'm happy to bring to you the seamstress tag as I feel like it'll be a great introduction to me and my channel and my sewing journey. I want to thank Vasla from Fashion Behind the Scenes for tagging me on this uh, seamstress tag. Even though that was a few months ago, I am finally getting around to shooting this video. I have um, all the questions for the sewing tag right here and I'm just going to go ahead and go through them. There are 12, so let's jump right in. Number one. Who are you? Well, like I said, my name is Tiffany. I host the Tip Stitch uh, sewing blog. I also have an online store, tipstitch.clothing, where I'll be adding some fall pieces soon. Uh, I'm also an engineer. That's my nine to five, my day job. Uh, I sew on the side. Uh, I'm also a wife and a stepmom to two great kids, a Yorkie mom to a very spoiled little dog. And um, that's pretty much me. Number two. When and why did you start sewing? Well, I started sewing about three years ago. Um, it's something that I've always wanted to do, but never took the time to attempt or actually try to do in the past. Number three, what is your favorite or most proudest make? And I'd have to say this was hard for me to pick, so I picked two. Uh, my most current fave is this Vogue 1526 halter pattern by Rebecca Valance. Uh, as soon as this pattern came out in the summer 2017 Vogue patterns, I knew I had to have it and I knew I had to make it. I ordered some red designer linen from Fabric Mark Fabrics um, and I just love this dress. It has pleats and interfacing and hidden pockets and it's fully lined. It has an invisible zipper. It has the halter back. It has an exposed zipper. There's just so many cute little elements that go into this dress. If I can figure out how to put a little pop up right here, I will, but don't hold me to that. Um, so I really do love this dress and this is one of my favorite makes of this summer. Um, it is definitely my favorite make of this past summer. Another one that I had to include was this Vogue 1329. This is the first pattern that I sold that looked professional in my eyes. It's fully lined, it has pleats, it has side seams, it has a uh, color blocking, an invisible zipper, so many different elements and it was the first project I made that when I turned the inside out I was I was so proud it seemed like a real dress to me and I love that it's still one of my favorite dresses number four what is your most disastrous make this was hard because I've had quite a few fails I mean you don't usually see our fails usually sewing bloggers and so that have a social media presence we just show you the things that turned out right but believe me if you're just beginning to sew there are many, many fails along the way. Um, the one I probably remember the most though is Vogue 9075. Now this pattern came out maybe one or two years ago. I think it was a fall or pre-fall Vogue pattern. I can't remember, but it was really popular. A lot of seamstress made it up. Um, Mimi G made it. I know So Sin City made it. Um, Erica Bunker made it. There are quite a few ladies who whipped up that jumpsuit or that dress. And it was just simply adorable on them. I had passed it by, didn't think much of it, and went back and purchased it because it looked so great on these ladies. Now, when I made it, it was a complete and total and epic fail. I'd like to blame it on being more advanced than my level at the time, but there was nothing really difficult about the pattern, nothing I had really never done before. It was possibly the fabric that I chose, but I just think it was wrong for my body type, which is why I skipped it in the first place and I should have stuck to my original thought. Um, I did not try to save that pattern. It is gone. It is in the trash. That fabric is just wasted. So, oh well. Number five, where is your favorite place to go fabric shopping? Uh, I know this is old and I should be over it by now, but Hancock Fabrics was my favorite place to go fabric shopping. Um, since they've closed, I know it's been over a year, um, I tend to buy most of my fabric online, either from Fabric Mart or Finch Fabrics. Um, I'll link to both of them below in the description and I love both of those. Fabric Mart has a great selection of everything. They always have a great sale. If you sign up for the newsletter and you get bombarded with these sales, please don't blame me for all the fabric that you're definitely going to buy. Um, they have a great selection of everything. Denim, wool, uh, double knits, ponty, ITYs, sweater knits, leather, corduroy. I mean, 
anything you can imagine they have and they're going to have a really good deal on it they also have flat rate shipping of i think 875 uh yeah i think it's 875 and that covers however much you order plus like i said they're always running a sale so you can't go wrong with them i've never had an issue with their quality with their shipping uh, with anything from fabric mart uh, again, another one that I've recently started purchasing from is Finch Fabrics. They're LAFinchFabrics.com. I really like their site as well. Their customer service is great. Um, they have a great selection of knits and wovens. Everything from Chalises to Chambray to Liverpool knits to double brush polys. They have a great selection of fabrics and I've been pleased with everything that I've purchased from them as well. They also have a really good, um, package section so like maybe all black knits you can get six or eight yards of nothing but black knits it doesn't you don't know which ones you're going to get they have some mystery box um items that they can also send you they do a good job of bundling up certain projects like swimwear fabric with elastic with let mesh lining etc so i like some of the offers that they offer as well locally i shop mostly from fine fabrics here in atlanta or the norcross area um, they have a really good selection of knits as well as, well, mostly knits, mostly double knits, lycra knits, um, ITYs, jersey knits. They also do have wool and silk and other fabrics. They're also a great place to buy your notions, so your zippers, your pins, your scissors, um, interfacing, elastic, and so forth. Um, and lastly, I still buy most of my big four patterns from Joanne when they're on sale. I also will buy interfacing, they aren't a good deal, sewing supplies when I have coupons, and occasionally fabric, but the fabric se uh, selection at my store is fairly limited. Number six is, what is your most used pattern? I think I could easily say McCall 6886. I don't know who doesn't love this pattern unless you just shy away from fitted dresses, but if not, this is a pattern that you have to have in your pattern stash. It is great and very versatile. I've made it in different types of fabrics from ITY knits to Dubber knits to Liverpool knits to scuba. Um, I've added belt sleeves. I've color blocked it. You could cut it off and make a top. You could add cuffs. You could do a v-neck or a round neck, long sleeve, short sleeve. You can vary the hem. You can do high splits on it as well. The option, uh, I've added a peplum to the bottom. The options with that dress are just whatever your mind can dream up i'm sure you can slash and cut and spread that pattern and make it work for you once you get your measurements down and the size that you need you're good to go from there it's definitely a tried and true another pattern because i think that's a pretty obvious one i think a lot of people would probably pick that one um is mccall 6744 now this is a summer pattern that has two dress lengths knee length and long it also has two bodices so there's a cross body sort of faux wrap bodice there's also just a regular tank bodice. And then there are two backs. There's a regular tank back as well as a racer back option for that dress. Um, and they all have an elasticized waist. I think I have sewn every view of that pattern. It is definitely a tried and true. It's the go-to for me. I've made the knee length, the maxis, the wrap, the tank, the racer back, all of them. Um, I absolutely love that dress. It's a quick go-to summer dress. Something you can definitely sew in the evening, although I'm a pretty fast sewer. Um, and wear the next day. Easy breezy, not difficult at all, and few pattern pieces, especially if you pick the tank option because that eliminates one front bodice piece. So if you don't have McCall 6744, check that out as well. Number seven is, what is your most dreaded sewing task? This hands down used to be hemming, but I'm trying to change how I feel about hemming because it's a sign that I'm almost done with the project. It's usually the last step that you have. Um, I'm trying to take a Aaron from So Style Me's look on that um, and look at that as a good thing and not a bad thing. So then I have to say my least favorite task is sewing buttonholes. For a long time, I avoided buttonholes. They just seem complicated. I have no idea why. Um, I know there's a foot, there's a stitch on my machine that does it. It still just doesn't seem like the easiest thing to do. Um, with this machine here, I, have, I still have problems with buttonholes. I don't know if it's user error, which it quite possibly could be, or if it's something with this machine. I've tried woven, I've tried knits, interfacings, not interfacings. It just seems like the fabric's usually too thick and the feed dogs don't want to pull it through. And I get stuck somewhere mid buttonhole, just a whole lot of zigzagging, getting stuck and my fabric will get stuck down in the pressure. I don't know. It's something that I'm doing, I'm sure, but it doesn't seem to work well. Now I have another machine, that machine that I borrowed from my mother three years ago that she hasn't received back. 
that one is much better with buttonholes. So now whenever I know buttonholes are in a project, I go ahead and just pull that one out and then I just use that machine for the buttonholes. So that's made it better, but I still really don't love doing buttonholes. So. Number eight is what is your favorite sewing task? Mm, I'm not sure that I have a favorite sewing task. I sort of like the whole process after cutting because I don't love cutting out patterns either. After cutting from initial sewing all the way to finishing it, I pretty much love all of those steps except for buttonholes. Um, I just like for to see the raw fabric become something wearable. I love at the end when I get to slip something on, I know that I've made it. I wear it out. People are like, girl, your skirt's cute. I'll be like, I know I made it. Thank you. You know, so that's the part I love the most is when you have the actual finished garment and you can wear it out. Number nine is what is your favorite sewing entertainment? For me, it's nine times out of ten, I'm watching TV on my laptop streaming it, whether it's live or on demand. And I have a couple of shows I typically have on. Big Bang Theory, Modern Family, Golden Girls, uh, Law and Order, or there's one more. Oh, King of Queens. One of those five shows is going to be on my laptop while I'm sewing. And the reason why is one, I love all of those shows, especially Golden Girls and Law and Order. But um, I've seen most all of those episodes. So when I have those playing in the background, I'm not distracted from my sewing. I don't feel like I have to watch my screen as opposed to watching my sewing machine because most of those episodes I really almost know by heart at this point. And they don't need my attention span. As soon as it starts, my brain starts processing it like in, in the back of my mind. And so I don't have to watch the show to watch the show. That other one out of 10 times, I'm listening to music streaming something or playlist or something um, but that's way less frequent than tv number 10 printed or pdf this used to be hand down printed because one big four fat patterns have pretty much everything covered i mean style wise but they can get a little boring they sometimes do appeal to an older trend set and their instructions aren't always as clear especially if you're a beginning seamstress. Um, sometimes the technical terms are confusing or the illustrations aren't quite clear enough or they put two or three steps in one step and you're trying to figure out exactly what you need to do. Um, so those are some of the downsides of the printed one but they are typically on sale if you have a Joann's and you live in the U.S. near you you can get those at a great deal so I do love that. Um, I also prefer tissue to the heavier weight paper but that might just be a personal thing. Um, with PDFs though I really enjoy supporting other seamstresses and small business owners. So I love the idea that me buying their pattern helps enable them to be creative and have their creative business. Um, now that I'm part of the sewing community, I really just feel like it's great to be supportive to those who have jumped out or stepped out um, into this creative space. So I do like that. I also like with PDF patterns that you get them immediately. So as soon as you see it, you log on to your computer, you go in, you purchase it, you hit checkout, it's already in your inbox. And you can print it out right at home from your printer then. You mean you can get started that night. Versus when new printed pattern comes out, especially from the big four, you have to run around to two and three in Joann's or Hobby Lobby or whatever to try to find um, the pattern when they come out, which can be really difficult and frustrating. Um, at times too. Now as everybody else I don't particularly love cutting out and taping together 37 pages so that I can cut out the patterns. So that still is sort of a downfall for printed patterns for PDF patterns to me but I do plan on looking into local and online businesses that let you print out the large format printing. Most of the indie companies now are giving you that AO size printing, which is the large format printing you can send to a large plotter. And then you can just have it on a big sheet of paper and you can go back to just cutting out your pattern pieces versus cutting and taping all the sheets together. So I think that's helping. So I'm 50-50 on printed versus PDF right now, um, but I'm going more and more PDF, although I still have way more printed patterns that I do PDF patterns. And then some indie people do offer, indie um, distributors do offer printed patterns as well. So that's always an option. Number 11, what sewing machine do you use? Well, like I said, I did borrow my mother's, 
machine three years ago that she's never getting back. She sent, bought another one though. She's okay, don't worry. Um, and that is a Singer Precision. It's not an old like vintage model, but it is an older model, maybe from the late uh, late 90s or early 2000. My point is Singer doesn't make that machine anymore, but I do love it. If you happen to find one at a yard sale or something, I say get it. I'm not going to pull it out because that would take too much time, but I do still use that one, especially for buttonholes. And it's more of my backup machine now than anything. I also have here this Singer Stylus. I really like this machine. It has quite a few stitches, most that I don't even use. Um, it has the speed control, which is good when I'm trying to teach uh, my stepdaughter how to sew. Uh, I can slow it down for her so I don't have to worry about her running over her finger. It also has the needle up and down um, and you can also start and stop this one from sewing from the machine in case you don't want to use the pedal. I always use the pedal though. Um, I also have two Brother Sergers, the 1034D, which is the same, I think it's the 60, 1634D and there's another one that's very similar to it. I do really like this serger. I think it's a great beginning serger. People give surges a bad rap with the threading and so forth. It's really not that bad. If you have one and it's sitting in a box in your corner, pull it out and give it a try. I promise you it's worth it. Um, I have two because I'm lazy. And one is always set up with a neutral, either black, white, or gray. And the second one is typically set up with the color of whatever the latest project I completed was. So sometimes I care about the inside of my garments matching uh, the, the serger thread. So I have reds, blues, greens, and all these different colors back here behind my machine that I use for certain projects. But when I can get away with it, or when it's just an odd color, I'm not gonna buy four spools of that thread. I use either the black, the white, or the gray for the base. I would like to have a third serger, primarily to keep it set up as a blind stitched hem machine. But I've decided instead of spending that money, I'll just wait and save up for a cover stitch because I love to sew with knits. That's my favorite material to work with. And I think the cover stitch is going to be valuable over the long run for hemming and necklines and sleeves and, and everything else. So I'm just going to save up for that instead of going ahead and buying another one of these. Number 12 is, do you have any other hobbies? And the short answer is no. I don't have time. Like I said, I work a nine to five. I sew part time. I have a husband. I have two kids and a dog. I do not have any more free time in my schedule to pick up any other hobbies. Although if I were to pick up another hobby, it would be knitting because I feel like that's a really good on the go hobby. Something you can do in the car, on the plane, road trips, vacation. You know, I went on vacation this summer and I packed up my sewing machine and my surgery to be honest with you and sold when we got down to the beach. But knitting is something you can do with just taking a couple of needles and a couple of skeins of yarn versus picking up like a whole desktop area kind of thing. So if ever I was to pick up something else, it would definitely be knitting. Um, but at this point, I think my husband and the kids would have a fit if I picked up another hobby and took up any more space in the house that I already take up with all my sewing machines and cutting table and fabric storage. So for right now, sewing's it. Well, thank you guys for tuning in. I'm really grateful that you stuck around to the end of the video if you did. Um, please go ahead and like this if, I, if you like this video and subscribe because in the future I'd like to bring you more videos uh, that are sewing related. So let me know in the comments what those could be. Would you like sew alongs? Do you want tips and tricks? Do you want how-to videos? Maybe a tour of my sewing space? maybe a video on different types of fabrics and when you would use them and why. Um, sewing tools, gadgets, I don't know, whatever might interest you, go ahead and leave that in the comments and I'll look forward to making maybe some videos on those topics soon. Um, and again, follow me on my blog, tipstitch.wordpress.com or on Instagram at tipstitched or on Facebook at tipstitched. I'm all of those places all of the time. Please feel free to follow me and I hope you like this video. Bye guys.